We are going to shoot, and I'm going to start with low-key example. It's nice having my beautiful, oh, you look beautiful. You're so cute. You look awesome. See, she's like modeling for us, that's excellent. Okay, so I'm gonna have you uh, stand right out here for me. All right, perfect. So in this first example, let me get all tethered up here and make sure I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. Perfect. Okay. I'm gonna move a couple things out of the way. Thank you. I think. All right, which one is that? All right, I'll probably use that one most. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Um, all right, so let's start in the very, very beginning of a simple low key lighting setup, and it's going to be with two lights. So, can you turn on the back two lights for me? All right, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a low key silhouette. And so, the low key silhouette, what I'm going to do is I'm going to light her profile on one side and I'm going to carve her out from the background on the other. So for both of these, by the way, all the lights I'm going to use today, uh, everything I'm using, I believe these are the 500 watts or these 1,000? Perfect. I'm using Profoto D1 Air 500 watts. That's what I use in my studio. Um, and the two, and can you turn the modeling light on that one? The two modifiers that I have here are one by four foot strip soft boxes. Um, can you grab me a barn door real quick? All right, this setup you can do, and also Cinefoil. Right there, perfect. All right, so this setup, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use these two strip soft boxes on either side to carve her out from the background. And I have moved my lights off as far to the side as possible, which gives me as much shadow as possible. And I'm not filling in any of the light in the front, which means shadow, shadows, shadows, and lots of shadows. Like, that, like this is what it means. And uh, the picture that I showed you before that I mentioned the fine art nude, this is basically one of the ways you could do this. Um, all right, so I'm gonna show you the shot, but I wanna tell you other ways you can do it. First of all, you can absolutely do this with speed lights. If you're in a small space and you have speed lights, positively you can get the same effect. Um, I've got the strip soft boxes, but you could also use barn doors. Barn doors from the either side, and then you can narrow the beam down. If you use barn doors, this is what would let you get the tiniest sliver of a highlight, super sharp. It looks like you drew it on with like a white marker. Like it, it gives you more focused light. Now, the reason is smaller opening, whereas with a strip softbox, it's a little bit broader, it's a little bit bigger, so it's gonna wrap around a little bit more. If you don't have barn doors, but you're like, man, I want those razor sharp highlights you're talking about. Something else you could do is buy Cinefoil. And Cinefoil, you can get at, um, I mean, you can get at B&H, you can get at theater supply shops. And this black Cinefoil, it's basically black tin foil that doesn't catch on fire. Because uh, I, what I did to create my first barn doors was um, cardboard. And then I taped it on with duct tape. The duct tape melted, the cardboard fell in, and it like smoked. So don't do that, I'm saving you effort. Uh, but you can create your own barn doors using Cinefoil. So you could tape them on, narrow it down, and get the same effect. I'm gonna pass this back to you. So something else that I find very useful when you're working with low key lighting is to eliminate as much ambient light as possible. Right now we are shooting in a nice daylight studio, which means it's, there's lots of light. It's not because the light's going to affect the picture, it makes it difficult to see what your model, modeling lights are doing. Because if you're using very narrow light, right? So if I'm just using a light on the center of the face and I can't see it, if the light's this big and the subject moves, now it's not going to be correctly placed. So that's why I like to use my modeling lights and ideally I work, I kind of close the light down a little bit. So I'm gonna have you take one more step center. I'm gonna have you turn to your left. Perfect, and now this is not a posing class, but if I'm gonna be shooting her in silhouette, I want the pose to look good in silhouette. So I'm gonna have you pop up your right knee. right knee. Perfect, lean forward a little bit. Great, arch your back a little, and then pull your elbow back just a little less, right there, perfect, and hide your left arm. Okay, so I cannot see what my modeling lights are doing at all, so we're gonna guess. Um, can you bring this in a little bit more? Um, if the light is further off to the side over here, it wraps around. The further I have it behind her, the narrower that light is. The more I bring it into the front, the more it wraps. Makes sense. So let me give this a quick test. And you're gonna look your head to the left the whole time. Thank you. Let's give this a try. 
Oh, it's set on black and white for some bizarre reason. Hold on. Okay, perfect. Let me turn it back to, although, honestly, I'm leaving it, it'll look good. <laughs> like, wait, that looks totally fine. And uh, so I just got the Mark IV, this, the, the Canon 5D Mark IV. Uh, it's not what I'm using today, but it was meant to be the day I got it, my dial fell off on the top of my, this is my, no, on my Mark III. So it was like meant to be. I'm like, oh, I got my new shiny camera replacing it. Okay, let me, let me get this test. And pull your right arm back just a little bit more. Perfect. Test. And of course I got to turn this on. And you said channel five, right? Perfect. All right. Looks good. I was going to tell you a little bit about strip softboxes and barn doors. So for a strip softbox, what it does is it gives you nicer, more even illumination. So if you're doing a full length shot, I would recommend a strip softbox. You could use barn doors, but what happens with barn doors is you usually get a hot spot, like in the middle of the body, it's really bright. And then by the time you reach the feet, it, it gets darker. So how strip softboxes work is it makes it hit that front diffusion, spread out, and it gives you more even fill, more even illumination. Okay, so that's looking good. Okay, so there's a base example of a low key image. When I shoot fine art nudes where I don't, like if a person's a little more uncomfortable and I don't just want them to look nude, this gives much more of a, a suggestion if they face straight on because you can watch curves and they can turn their head. Um, or it's more of a study of figure, shape, and form, and light, and all of that because you're really paying attention to the light and the shape. So that looks good for me. Um, so this is an example of low key. But let's say it's a portrait and I don't really want to have her facing to the side. Like I, I would like to see her face. And so what I can do is I can add in a third light to the front. So uh, Joseph, can you grab me that light and bring it up? Now if I bring this light to the front and I've got a big soft box that lights everything, it's not low key anymore because the light goes everywhere. So if I want this to stay low key, I could take the light off far to the side, right? Like that's one of the ways I could keep it low key. Bring it over so that it's Rembrandt. Uh, another thing that I could do would be to change the modifier and use a narrower light source like a grid or add a grid to something. So let me quickly demonstrate a couple of those options. So I'm going to, this is the biggest light stand ever. All right, let me give this a couple examples. And I'm going to take off this grid first. All right, so this is a grid for a, um, for a beauty dish. So this will do something similar in the way that it focuses the light as those other grids. But the little grids, because they're little, give you smaller illumination. This is on a bigger light source, so already it's going to be lit a little bit more broadly. So let me pass this to you. I will have you put it back on, and I just tore off the tag, so good luck getting it back on later. <laughs> and let me turn this on. And I'm gonna see if I can turn my modeling light up a bit. Good, good, is that on yet? Oh, good, all right, good. And if I hold it in, does this get brighter, Ready? Yeah, perfect, okay. So I'm going to have her face straight on. And if I have her face straight on, real quick, what it looks like, can you cross your knee over? Yeah. Whatever one is, is easier. Great. And f even further, perfect. Now, turn your body to your left a teeny bit. Arch your lower back. Lean your chest towards me. OK. Now put one hand high on your hip and one hand a little bit lower and pop your, right there. Good. Shoulder down just a little bit. OK. So let me show you. There's, this is an example where I'm gonna flat light my subject. So this is going to be at paramount with the light nice and centered, roughly, because I can't totally see what it's doing. We'll say about, say about, it's, it's gonna be more loopish. You, you, you can deal, right? It's okay. Okay, let's check this out. All right. And I'm probably gonna have to lighten it up a little bit. All right, now, it is very useful to photograph these beautiful subjects because 
man, <laughs> she looks good already, right? Um, now, you see the beautiful highlights on the side of her body, right? Like it's carving her out from the background. But because I've used this broader lighting, light source, there's just a lot of light. And it's not really, truly low key. If I'm going for really dark and mysterious, I need to narrow it. So one of the things I can do is either add a grid, but the first thing I'm going to do is move it off to the side. Let's add more shadows. Lower key means more shadows. So what I can do is I can move this light, move this light, move this light. I'm totally guessing on this without the modeling light visible. But we're going for somewhere around Rembrandt. Good. <laughs> yeah, right? OK, so, so see how that starts to move it in the, like, the lower key area, moving the light off to the sides, making it darker. And what I love about this is if you look at her cheek on the right, do you see how the shadows, and then you've got that highlight, that beautiful highlight that shows her jawline? I love that. Because if it's pure shadow, one of the things we think is most beautiful about people, we love jawlines. And so it would be lost. So I love that that highlight's there. OK, so Joe, will you add on the uh, grid for me? Now, she's wearing a black outfit. So you can't quite tell. But right now, you can actually see, because of the sequins on her outfit, uh, down at her knees, the light is hitting it there. And you can lower it if you need to. Um, so it, it's got a lot of spread of light. So what this beauty dish is going to do, it's going to bring the light in just a little bit, focus it a little bit more. So we're going to keep kind of pushing it to different extremes. Great. Perfect. Thank you. Let's try this again. Same thing. So in this shot, her chest looks pretty bright to me. See how it darkens it down? It's like focusing the light even more. So it's a little bit more of the illumination on her face instead of on the chest. So it's giving me a little bit more drama, a little bit more focus. Keep pushing it, pushing it. OK, you want to go further? OK, if let's go further. We take the beauty dish off. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a five degree grid. You could do 20, but we're, we're going to push it like we're going to push it all the way. So we're going to take this five degree grid, put it in Rembrandt. Oh, and I'm going to attempt to see, I'm going to attempt to see if I can see it on her face. Yeah, right there. OK, perfect. I probably will have to adjust my exposure, but let's just test here. Great. And lean back just a little. Good. Chin down a tiny bit. Maybe a little brighter. Not too bad. Perfect, one more. So you can kind of see there's almost no light on her chest at all. It's just that focused light on her face. So this takes you to super low key. Um, as a side note, this is for those of you who may be a little bit more advanced. Um, let's say that I was being asked by this clothing designer to shoot this piece, and they wanted something dramatic, but now you can't see the dress very much. What I would do is I would add another light. I would use this focus beam of light on her face, and then I'd add a softbox here, super low power, just to pick up the sparkles. So it stays low key, it stays dramatic, but I don't lose the detail in the dress. So that's when, like, I, I wanted to keep it three or fewer, but there are, there are reasons to be a gear horde, <laughs> or at least I tell myself that, and it works out amazingly. OK, perfect. What are you exposing when you're taking these pictures? OK, so um, thing number one, I'm totally cheating right now because I'm just going super fast, and I, I shoot with Profoto D1s. Like, see how I'm, I'm knowing them pretty much? I shoot with these every day, so I have been guessing. But uh, I would be metering off of her face. And typically, let's say her face says F11 or F9, so I'm putting it right here, metering towards the light. I usually put my background lights, I start them the same. So if her face meters F9 or F11, the background, I, both of those lights metering towards them, I put them at F9 or F11. And then if I go, man, I want them brighter, <laughs> I turn them up in power and I go until it looks good. So, but I start them the same. Great. Can you do me a favor and can you bring this light to the front? with a barn door. Uh, yeah, cool. All right, so the m basics of what you just saw, to summarize. Move the light off to the side to create more shadows, gives you lower key. Narrow the light, gives you lower key. Um, 
what we're working with here is pure black shadows, but you don't have to. And that's kind of where I want to take you next. So let's say for this shot, I decide that the mood I want is this is like sexy, like super like sexy, alluring, whatever. And so in the beginning, I listed a whole bunch of different ways that you can control your lighting and a whole bunch of different ways you can control your mood. And one of the ways you can control mood would be color. But you can control color with lighting and put them together. So I'm going to do a low key picture that also has some color in it. So can you grab me a blue slash teal gel? Great. Perfect. And can you grab a teal on top of it too? And I'm going to build this in slowly. All right. So let me talk a little bit about gels. Um, gels are awesome for introducing mood. I think that if you don't have a reason for using them, sometimes it can look cheesy or go too far. I think that honestly kind of comes with experience and, and I encourage people just to experiment and if it looks cheesy, oh well. Like start off and you figure it out and you build from there. Um, I, in, there's a couple of presentations that I do that early on, it, that, I have so many awesome cheesy pictures. So not that my pictures are amazing now, but I've gotten better. It's you develop your eye, you develop your taste. Um, so anyway, there's two directions I think I could go. If I'm going for dark, dramatic, sensual, sexy, I could either go for fiery red, which I do all the time. It's kind of my jam. Or I go the other direction and go for like a cool, mysterious blue. So I'm going to go for a cool, mysterious blue. And I'm going to give you an idea of how gels work. So gels show up most in shadow areas. That's, that's how they work. So the example I always give is I give the bucket of water example, and I've used it a million times in my lighting classes. But let's say I am tossing a bucket of water at you that is regular water. OK, cover you. And then I take a bucket of blue dye. It kind of just like flows over it, right? They kind of blend together. Like the dye doesn't really stick. But if I take the regular bucket and I just do the left half of your face with the regular bucket of water, and then I come over here on the right-hand side with my blue jet, uh, dye, it'll really stick on the dry part. So I think of shadows like dry areas. They're dry from light. So when you give it that gel, it soaks it up. So what I know is in this picture, wherever there are shadows, if I add a blue gel, that's where it's going to show up, as long as it's pointed in that area. Now, if I want this to stay in the low key, like I've already got it nice and super low key, I just got to make sure that light isn't really bright. I want it to be more of a, like a hint and a tone in the shadows instead of overpowering the entire photo. So I mean, it's kind of to taste. So we're just going to move it to the front a little more. And I'll. Uh, We'll figure out how much I want. And what I would probably play around with as well is a little bit of my white balance. Like I'd mess around with it. Maybe try tungsten so I make it really cool. Or what I would do in post is I would make the skin really, really pale and then make it really poppy and high contrast. It's, you know, it's, it's stylistic. So let's test this one. Same curve for me. Pop that over. Relax that shoulder just a little bit. Great. And chin just a teeny bit right there. Let's test it. Of course, of course, I still have my black and white on, so I got to turn it off. All right, let me try it again, and let me just make sure this is going off here. Perfect. Okay. Great. All right, cool. So it fills in blue in the shadows. Now, of course, it like for me, it's going a little bit too bright, like I still want it to be moody. So I just turn it down until it doesn't look like it's overpowering too much. Great, chin down a little, perfect. Great, I think this would be more appropriate for what I would like. And so it's kind of like just filling in the shadows and the clavicles and it's making sure, because without that back light, it's gonna blend in on the right hand side of the photo. So now by illuminating the front, pops it out just a little bit more. You could light this with four. I mean, kind of depends. So in other words, you can use high key, low key for mood. 
but you can also add color to your lights to push that mood in this low-key example. All right, so that's been kind of an overview of just, I mean, they're literally endless low-key examples, but I wanted to show you kind of my approach to things. I keep pushing it further and further and further.